Now, unlike the combination of two functions through addition, subtraction, or multiplication, the composition of two functions is a different approach. And so, in the composition of two functions, what we're doing is, is we're taking the outputs of one function and using them as the inputs into the other. And so to indicate that that's the process that we're doing is an open circle. And it's important that we understand the sequence of the use of the functions using this open circle. And we just read this as f circle g of x or g circle f of x. But the sequence is as follows. If it's written as f circle g of x, as we see it here, that means we're actually going to start with the function g of x, we're going to take its output, and then use that as the input into the function f. So it's actually the function that is listed second that we're going to make use of first. So we've got these two different ways that we can write this. So if we think of this as f circle g of x is f of g of x, that would be the way to read it in our head. And so then we know we have to start with g of x and then use those input outputs as the inputs into f. And then, of course, if we reverse it, like we see in the second line here, g circle f or g of f of x, is f of x first, then take those outputs and plug them into g. So let's put that into practice with the examples that we see here. So in this top row, we've got a couple functions where we're going in the sequence f of g of 1, f of g of negative 4. So if we rewrite this, I'm going to be doing f of g of 1 in this sequence, meaning I'm going to take 1, plug it into g, take that output, and then plug it into f. So if I slide up here, I want to find what g of 1 is. So I take 1 and I plug it into my g function. That's negative 4 times 1 plus 2. So negative 4 plus 2 is going to give me negative 2. So that now means I'm going to be finding f of negative 2. So I take negative 2 and I plug that into f. So if we go through that sequence just up here, we've got f of negative 2. We've got 1 half times negative 2 plus 4. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So ultimately, through this sequence of events, we get an output of 3. For the second one, if I rewrite it as f of g of negative 4, we're going to go through the same sequence. I take negative 4 and I plug it into g, and then I take that output and I plug it into f. So again, moving up here just for space, I'm finding g of negative 4. So we've got negative 4 times negative 4 plus 2. So negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, plus 2, I get 18. So now we've got f of 18. So I need to take 18 and plug it into f. So I've got f of 18 equals 1 half times 18 plus 4. Half of 18 is 9. 9 plus 4, we get 13. So ultimately, we get an output of 13. And the next two are sequences reversed. So instead of f of g of 1 or negative 4, we now have g of f of 1. And so we first are going to plug into f and then take those outputs and plug them into g. And so if we take 1 and plug it into f, we move up here. So f of 1, I'm going to have 1 half times 1 plus 4. So half of 1 is a half, plus 4 is 4 and a half. And so now I'm going to take four and a half and use that as my input into g. So I've got g of four and a half equals negative four times four and a half and then plus two. So negative four times four and a half is going to give me negative 18 plus two. So we get negative 16 as a result. In the last one here, same sequence, g of f of negative 4. So we're going to have to find f of negative 4. 
So I'll sneak up here to do that. So I'm plugging negative 4 into my f function. So I've got 1 half times negative 4 plus 4. So half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So that means we now have to find what g of 2 is. So I take 2 and I plug it into my function g. So we can sneak that in here. Negative 4 times 2 plus 2. So we get negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. In the last two examples, you'll notice that there's no specific value that we're plugging in to the sequence of functions. Instead of saying f of g of 1 or g of f of 1, it's f of g of x or g of f of x. So what we're being asked to find here is what is the one function that can replace this sequence of events. So instead of having to take a function or a value and plug it into f, then take that and plug it in output and plug it into g, and then eventually get that final output, what if there's just one function that served both of those purposes? It might be helpful if we use a kind of visual example here. So as you can see, I teach art part-time besides being a math and engineering teacher. But what we have here is a washing machine and a dryer. And so if we think about the input into a washing machine, it's going to be dirty clothes. That's our input. And so the output from that washing machine is going to be wet, clean clothes. And that output from the washing machine is going to be the input into the dryer. So that same input is going to be wet, clean clothes into my dryer. And then the dryer does its work. And so my output is going to be dry, clean clothes. So what we're looking for is instead of having these two separate functions, these two separate machines, instead what we want is a new machine that instead of us having to do two processes, we can take our dirty clothes, plug them into this wire, if anyone wants to help me design and market this device, uh, just uh, reach out. But we're going to take dirty clothes and put those as the input into this one machine, and we're going to have dry, clean clothes come out. So instead of having a two-step process, like we did in the previous examples with the actual numbers, we want to try to find what is the one equation that works to replace the sequence of events. I plug in an input, and I generate an output, and I'm done. So let's see if we can find these replacement functions, these compositions of functions. So again, f of g of x is this sequence here. So what I'm going to do is instead of plugging in a number into g, I'm just going to take this entire equation and plug it into f. So I've got f of so in place of g of x, I'm going to put negative 4x plus 2. Since negative 4x plus 2 is what generates the outputs of the g function, I can just plug that exact function right there. And now I'm going to use that as the input into my function f. So that means I'm going to replace x with that entire equation, negative 4x plus 2. So it's going to be 1 half times negative 4x plus 2. And then I still have the plus 4. So if we keep going, distribute the 1 half, we've got negative 2x plus 1 and then plus 4. So we eventually end up with a function equation of negative 2x plus 5. And so this now is the equation that we can use in place of the sequence of events of plugging numbers into g and then taking those outputs and plugging them into f. And we can verify that by looking at the top row up here. When we found f of g of 1, we got an answer of 3. If I plug 1 into my new function down here, negative 2 times 1 plus 5, I indeed get 3. Over here, when we did f of g of negative 4, I ended up with 13 as an output. If I plug in negative 4 into my replacement function down here into my composition, I get negative 2 times negative 4 is 8 plus 5 is 13. 
So this function down here, this equation, replaces that sequence of plugging into G and then taking that output and plugging it into F. And so here we're being asked to find the reverse. So instead of f of g of x, we want the equation that replaces plugging into f first and then generating those outputs and plugging those into g to get a final result. So it's g of f of x. So that means I'm going to replace f of x here with the equation. So g of 1 half x plus 4. So that means this now is going to be plugged into x up here. So now we're going to take 1 half x plus 4 and plug it in for x in the g function. So I'm going to have negative 4 times 1 half x plus 4 and then plus 2. So if we distribute that negative 4, we're going to get negative 2x plus 16, or sorry, minus 16 and then plus 2. So then if we gather our like terms, we get negative 2x and then minus 14 as our composition of those two functions, g of f of x. And just as we did before, we could verify in this row here where we evaluated g of f of x at various values. If we plug in 1, into this equation, we're indeed going to get our answer of negative 16, the same as we got previously. And then finally, if we plug in negative 4, negative 2 times negative 4 is 8, minus 14 is negative 6, same answer that we got when we went through the sequence of events. The last thing I do want to point out is composition is not commutative. You can see when we reversed the order of the functions, f of g of 1, versus g of f of 1, we did not get the same result. First time we got 3, second time we got negative 6. Over here, same thing, we didn't get the same result. And if we go back to our washer-dryer analogy, if we take dirty clothes and plug them into the dryer, we're not going to ultimately end up with dry, clean clothes when we're all done if we use the machines in reverse order. So the same thing is true with these functions.